for some people, trying to leave a toxic situation, trying to leave a narcissist is like being under the spell of some invisible force field where every time they try and leave, every time they think about leaving, they feel frozen. They feel stuck. Is that you? Are you a person that feels completely frozen by the grips of the toxic situation that you're in and unable to leave it. And every time you try, you just feel held back and frozen. I'm Lise Colucci, and I am here to help you understand and heal from toxic relationships in your life and transform your life after narcissists have been in it. So, so I get fight, right? That makes sense, right? We're like being someone's coming at you and you come back and, you know, and then you go into flee and you run. That makes sense, right? From a, the point of view of self-protection. I get, you know, fawn where you just make it better. You make it better, right? And flight, of course, take off, get away. But this freeze response, it keeps you there with a toxic person in a toxic situation, repeating and repeating and repeating the same thing over and over, and how is that protecting you? Well, it protects you from what could be worse. Like that's what we think it's protecting us from. It's the most interesting to me of the of the trauma responses because it's holding us there. What it is doing is it's shutting us down and causing a sort of disassociative fog to come over us so that we are not escalating the toxic thing that's right in front of us. It's keeping us from engaging in the toxic situation with the toxic person and the narcissistic person so that we stay safe. Does that make sense? Because if we engage, if we're not frozen and we engage, then it can escalate. Then it can get more dangerous to our minds. I believe that's what it's doing. But when you think about it from like the point of view of leaving, you're like, wait a minute, why is my defense mechanism keeping me here? What the heck is going on with that? A lot of people have thoughts in their head when they feel frozen that are things like, well, I know I should leave, but I'm just waiting for, you know, that last thing. I want to catch them cheating. I want to catch them lying. I want to, I, I need to catch this. I need to catch that right? You're waiting for the final last thing to happen. A lot of people, it's absolute straight up fear. They're terrified of leaving. They feel, maybe you feel, you, you don't know how to function without this person, or you feel like it's just fear without any other words that go to it. You just feel scared. Okay. Another thing people feel is thoughts of loneliness. So maybe you're one of those people, right? Like where you feel like, oh my gosh, I'll be so lonely. I can't stand to be alone a minute because your whole life has revolved around taking care of toxic people. It makes sense that you wouldn't know who you are outside of that. You would be literally like this little thing just floating around in space or this little tiny person lost in the giant ocean all by yourself because you've never spent the time to get to know you because you haven't had the opportunity to do so because your whole life has been about taking care of toxic people. So... Um, another thing that people might fear or feel rather is you might feel isolation. You might feel the grips of that isolation that the narcissistic relationship has put you in. And because of that, you don't know where to turn. And so the freeze comes over because you feel like, well, what else am I going to do? I have nowhere to go. I have no one. And that may be a truth for you, right? Like it may not, these aren't made up things. They could be real, legitimate, tangible things that are happening in your life. But they become this invisible barrier that we're going to talk about. And another thing is you feel conflicted. Perhaps you feel that cognitive dissonance every second. Perhaps you're with a covert narcissist. The conflict of the cognitive dissonance that comes from the, re in, uh, the intermittent reinforcement, meaning the love bombing and the devaluing that happens super <laughs> irregularly and super intermittently now and then on occasion, then it creates the confusion in the mind. The mind says, wait a minute, I love that person. Wait a minute, that person's cruel. And it, it gets, your mind gets really confused and full of cognitive dissonance. Go back and watch some videos on that. I have quite a few. So that is some of the ways that people can feel when they are trying to leave, wanting to leave, being their own invisible barrier that feels like an invisible force field when you go to leave. If you know what I mean, if you've experienced this, let me know if that's a good description because that's my experience of it. Wrote down about six things here, seven things that may be really important if you are stuck, trying to leave, wanting to leave, wishing you could leave, 
and are well aware of the fact that you're frozen. Fear is a powerful, powerful emotion that will hold you in place. It is, its whole function is to stop you from doing a thing so you don't get hurt, right? Fear is an invisible force field holding you back from making any change. You cannot make change without doing something differently. It, kind of impossible. You do things the same. Things will naturally change as they decay, as they age, as they, in a natural, very slow progression. But if we want faster change, we have to make the change, right? We have to be open to the experience of the discomfort that the change might bring. And fear is what locks you from allowing you to get past. Another thing is you are stuck perhaps due to the pattern of the love bombing and the devalue, the narcissistic cycle of how they are in relationships. And if you are stuck due to that pattern, again, we talked about cognitive dissonance before, that's where you're at. You are full of cognitive dissonance. You love them and know they are horrible for you at the same time. All right, you're trauma bonded. I have an entire playlist on trauma bonds. Please go watch any of those if you feel like that's your reason. You perhaps believe the lies of the manipulation. So perhaps the lies that the narcissist has told you when they are gaslighting you, when they are projecting, when they're when they're being really toxic to you, have gotten in your head, right? So you hear the voice of the narcissistic person. If you grew up with it, you probably have this going on too, okay? And what that creates is low self-esteem and self-doubt. How could you possibly know what's right for your life? And if you have low, low self-esteem, why would you try? Your worth is coming from taking care of this toxic person. And man, will they let you take care of them for the rest of your life. And I don't mean in a good way. I mean in a way of like you being responsible for everything that's wrong. You being the problem. You having to fix yourself all the time. Jump through hoops in order to keep this relationship alive. And they will let you do that forever because my goodness, the supply that they soak up from you having all these problems and doing all these things to maintain this relationship. So, you know, what they're putting into the relationship is nothing. The narcissist doesn't put into a relationship. They, the narcissistic person will simply start skimming the fat off the top, which is the supply, right? They don't want to participate in relationship. They don't want to allow you to make mistakes. They don't want to allow you to be a real person. You're so busy maintaining when you're in a toxic relationship that you forget who you are and you lose your self-esteem and what you do when you come out the other side and you're right, right on the edge, ready to leave. You think, well, wait a minute. Every decision I've made has been the wrong one. I don't know how to make decisions. How can I make this major decision for my life? Okay. So, I mean, when you have that going on, it's super important to get some support find someone to talk to. Here's another reason that you may feel stuck. When you are in constant adrenaline, cortisol highs, your nervous system goes into an amygdala reaction, which means you're always in fight, flight, freeze, fun, right? You're always there. You're always in a trauma response pretty much most of the time. So when your nervous system has that happen, it's overactivated. Your overactivated nervous system is controlling your life. So that freeze is a nervous system reaction. It creates a brain fog that makes you forget what's happening, that makes you not know how to even call a moving company, right? Like, or what to do to help yourself. It makes you shut down. It makes you like have the feelings of detachment from your own life. And the thing is, because this has happened so often and so long, you are likely in, in the self-preservation mode of emotional shutdown. And when you get in the emotional shutdown, you cannot just shut down the bad. Okay. Your drive, your impulse for self-protection, your desire to have joy in your life, gone it's gone because you are stuck in this reaction. And now, in my opinion, and from working with myself <laughs> on myself, right, and working with people through coaching, one of the one of the better ways and and 
tools to use in, in working with this piece is your body, your physical body, using techniques for somatic types of experiencing and healings and methods for working directly with how this is affecting your body, where it's affecting your body, and then mindfulness combined so that you are able to really get behind this amygdala reaction, get outside of the reaction that's happening and begin healing from different places in your brain. When we're talking about our nervous system and our amygdalas, we have to remember that what happens when we go into an amygdala response like that, a trauma response, the rest of the brain, it kind of shuts down. It's going, you take over, you're the boss, you're going to get us to safety. Once we're to safety, then we'll, we'll come back online. But for right now, you take over. And so when our amygdala is doing is, is in the more activated state, it's hard for logic to reason with. Yeah. If you need coaching, group coaching, peer support to send me an email, whatever information is in every description of every video, hit the thumbs up, hit the like, share the videos, 